Hey everyone, looks like I'm back, hopefully for good. Um, sorry about the massive hiatus, not planned, but like I said, hopefully not going to happen again. So I was thinking about getting my return kicked off with another review of my favourite system, Vault 57. Um, two years ago, back in 2013, I did a review for the second Vault 57 event, which was also the first event I attended. Um, since then, I've done another two events, both at the same time of year, roughly the start of March, and the overseer has asked me to do a review comparing the event earlier this year to the one I did back in 2013. And since he seems to be my only fan, why the hell not? So um, I'll, I'll try and run it through in the order that I ran through my last event, last review, um, and just basically compare. So. First things first was the appearance. Uh, visually, things started out amazing and just kept getting better. Um, Darren Stocker and Mark Cordroy, if your LARP is in the UK, you'll definitely know those names. They're both massive contributors to the aesthetic of Vault 57. They create monster suits, weapons, various other bits for us to incorporate. Uh, last year, Mark created a mutated arm to be used as an NPC. By an NPC, the arm wasn't the NPC all on its own. Um, and a uh, ripper sword that really ruined the player's day. Um, and Darren um, has provided us with some appropriate super mutant torsos to wear and a variety of melee weapons. Um, at the start of this year, we even had our very own Nuka-Cola machine, which was created completely on his own by Simon Key. You might have already seen it. The photo actually made it to the front page of Reddit not long after the event, you know, happened. Um, and it was there for three or four weeks I think um I'll tell you something the delighted looks on the players faces when they saw it in the bar were absolutely wonderful really made us feel like we get things right and yes it was completely functional there was you know nuka cola and uh quantum nuka in it um which was really really nice it really really set the tone um for the last three events we've used the gunman air soft site in Tuddenham for its sort of appropriate broken down, bombed out vibe, and this year was exactly the same. Um, it's been renamed each time, as obviously the players have advanced within the world that they're in. Um, so in 2013, it was Truck Stop. In 2014, it was Hidden Rock. And uh, earlier this year, it was just known as the Exile Zone, a place where overrunners go when they contract a disease that makes them mutate into lizard people. Um, they've got their own culture, complete with an absolutely terrifying queen who had, you know, mild psychic abilities. Um, during downtime, crew were done up with appropriately reptilian makeup, so scales on their face and just patches, so not completely mutated. We don't want to go too far into D&D &D territory. Um, and, and we were allowed to mingle with the players to really sort of drive home the feeling of this place being occupied by more than just the players. It's a small system, so we don't really have enough crew for that feeling all of the time, um, but we can try. And it seemed to work. Every time I was down there as a random exile NPC in the evenings, the players enthusiastically interacted with me. Um, a special shout out to the guy that um, told me that it was the American way to own a gun. Um, he, was, he was repairing players' firearms for free. Um, no caps needed, but it was it was absolutely compulsory for an American citizen to own a gun and if you did not own a firearm you were not doing your duty as an American citizen and I genuinely had to leave that encounter because I was laughing so hard it's fantastic he yeah he was great um if he's watching this he knows we we need a talk we got my eye on you um <laughs> um so one of the points of the first event that I was so taken with was the effort to give us proper fallout food like um, Blammer Mac and Cheese. Um, that's one of the iconic sort of things that you can find. Um, and our cook from that event, Kelly Sweeney, she's just upped her game every single time. She's given us bigger and bigger portions, more and more options, while making it look all incredibly wastelandish and irradiated. Um, last year there was a... Um, there was a stew. It was absolutely lovely. And she'd used spinach to dye it green. Um, and it was a very vivid green. And she had sort of like a very, very thin little chorizos um, that really looked like rat tails. So it was quite funny watching players fish that out of their stew only for her to calmly go, yeah, a bit of rat. Um, yeah, that was 
that was fun. Um, so visually and aesthetically, not much has changed except that things have improved, which I back in 2013, if you'd have told me that, I'd have laughed because it was quite amazing, but it's just gotten better and better. And the sheer scale of the immersion has just gotten huger and just so much better. Um, second point was organisation. Um, after the 2013 event, a couple of refs dropped the system for various reasons, um, personal lives, we don't begrudge them that at all, obviously this is a hobby, we can't expect them to dedicate their entire lives to this. Um, it obviously increased the workload and stress of the other refs, but honestly, when time in was called, the added pressure, it was just unnoticeable. Um, NPCs were still handed out months in advance to crew members, best suited for them. Um, if you'll remember, that was one thing that I really, really enjoyed was the fact that some of us, when we, we requested that we get NPCs, if we did get NPCs, we got them six, seven, eight months in advance so that we could really create our own NPC and really, you know, wear it the best way that we felt we were given the bare bones and we built it up from there. Um, there's one NPC this year that really stood out for me was the Exile Queen. Um, the lady who'd been asked to portray her basically made her entire kit from scratch and um, she made the whole thing look like a very, very post-apocalyptic wedding dress and she looked fantastic. She had gold scaled makeup and some really unsettling white contact lenses set the whole thing off. And she played the part absolutely magnificently. I mean, far and away better than we could have hoped for. Really was. Um, so at the, yeah, that was one thing that I really enjoyed. Um, at the 2013 event, I was also very taken with the use of radios, which um, allowed us to efficiently manoeuvre crew without the sudden flurry of activity, sudden flurry of rough activity, alerting all of the players that something was about to happen, but pretend you don't notice, which unfortunately it happens. It's a, it's a thing that we notice. We, we can't help it. When we're players, we just can't help picking up on the fact that, oh, there's a ref over there. Maybe I should get my weapon. Maybe I should put my armour on. No reason. We can't help it. it it's a thing that happens. Um, so, um, Back in 2013, the use of radios meant that there was little to no warning at all whenever an event was about, to, whenever an encounter was about to happen. So um, it meant that we could, you know, manoeuvre the crew and get into position and the players really felt like they were fighting for their lives and everything was happening unexpectedly. Um, this year we still use radios to communicate, but we discovered that they're a little off-putting if you're in the middle of an encounter and suddenly your pocket starts bleeping. So... For the most part, we reverted back to just sending some poor fool racing up and down, back and forth between crew camp and player camp to deliver messages. But the best thing about the Wasteland world is, is that all you have to do is slap a courier hat and bag on and get the right badge and nobody's going to notice because you're part of the world, you know, rather than a ref turning up and muttering with various people. If a courier turns up and mutters with various people, nobody pays any attention. It's genius. I was very impressed with that. Um, and in a way, far more immersive than radios, so much better. Um, so, so far I've had nothing but good things to say. Um, the review I did back in 2013, there was a very, very minor teething problem, and it was the only thing that I could think of when I did the review regarding the distribution of airsoft ammo. Um, because the system utilises airsoft gun, we wanted to really emulate emulate the um, Fallout world and give the players limited ammo. Um, we also wanted to include the looting aspect for ammo and we created fake rounds that players could trade in for airsoft ammo. Since, um, I don't know if you guys know this, airsofters will know this, non-airsofters, you can't just pick up the used ammo off the floor and use it because it's got dust and nastiness in it and that will absolutely ruin your gun. So you can't do that. Um, unfortunately, I can't remember what the exact issue was. I did <laughs> I did read my last review, but that didn't specify either. Um, there was an issue, there was a miscommunication, something happened and the players ended up with more ammo than we had planned for them to have, which meant that they were a little bit overpowered and they weren't finding the fights as difficult as we wanted them to fight which took the survival part out of the equation, which is obviously a huge part of Fallout. Um, in the two events since then, we have successfully balanced firefights and melee fights so that everyone gets the combat we enjoy, and more importantly, the ammo has been rationed well enough that players are carefully approaching potential firefights instead of charging straight in guns blazing. So the ammo 
being too much is now gone where it should be and is just sort of like just limited enough that the players are having to really think about their choices um that was the only issue back in 2013 that i could think of um so i was really impressed with that uh this year we had a bit of a power issue um in 2013 we used a generator which even though it kept the place really nicely lit at night we had massive spotlights and really industrial lights and they looked fantastic um the gener generators are really noisy um it drowned the noise of anything that wasn't immediately in your face which was a bit of a bit of a problem because um there are a couple of instances that we went in making a lot of noise and the players didn't hear us at all um which took a bit of the excitement out of the encounter but we could work around it um so instead of using the generator this year and last year we used a leisure battery that we just hooked up to a solar charge during the day um last year we didn't have a problem this year some said that the bar was too dark at night because of the fact that we were using a leisure battery obviously we had to cut down on the amount of industrial spotlights we were using but unfortunately if we had hooked any more lights up then the battery wouldn't have lasted the whole night and um, because we had to use it because we had to recharge it during the day that meant that we couldn't have the wasteland radio playing during the day either because that also got plugged into the battery um, subtly obviously um, yeah we couldn't have the radio playing during the day either which i agree does leave the place feeling a little bit flat and a little bit quiet during downtime in the you know interim um we're working on a solution but the only one i can think of is more batteries and that gets kind of clunky so no promises um but again that's a, that's a really really minor issue um so basically vault 57 is improved massively from the first time i was there um everything's just gone up and up and up um issues have been resolved aesthetics uh blow me away um everything's fantastic it, there's a reason it's my favorite system um don't tell any of the other guys that because it will hurt the feelings um maybe shouldn't publish this before i do a before i play an event uh i'm sorry darren i love your system too i promise um if you like what you've heard and you feel like giving it a try then feel free to come along the next event is being held at a very secret location on the hampshire coastline so if you do want to come along you're going to have to check the facebook groups for information um links to everything is going to be in the description down there um and uh yeah if you do decide to come be sure to come along and find me you can't really miss me i've got a shaved head um and yeah come and find me and let me know that it was me that told you to come along so that i can feel super flattered and very happy make me happy um that's all for me for now if you've got any ideas or requests for future lark themed videos or lark related videos drop me a message either on my tumblr on here um anywhere you like then out